Hey friends, I'm Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. Welcome to the shit show. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Monday Night Q&A. We are, so that was the um, Walksnail 65 millimeter rig back when it was on 30,000 kV motors. It is now on Weebleed 702 32,500 kV motors. Um, I wish it had been on these motors for that because at the bottom of those dives, um, it just didn't have the power to weight ratio to, to keep it from doing all kinds of wacky stuff. Here's, um, <clears throat> here's the rest of that battery that we started here. This is DVR off of the quad. It's, oh my God, look at that. <laughs> I got really, see, look, there it is. I got really lucky on that one. <laughs> Jesus. Um, so this guy was doing the same thing that the other one was. It was winding up and it was charging forward and I didn't expect that. Um, see it just like traveling forward and I'm trying to like, I'm trying to manage it. Um, I should have pushed out this way, but I thought maybe I could just bring it over to the left there. And that was a, that was a bad, milk was a bad choice. Um, but I mean, good Lord, this is 60 frames. This is 60 frame a second, 1080 video from a uh, 30 four 35 gram toy helicopter <laughs> um really really just out of this world performance um all things considered and i think i get it one more time here i think i might have gotten it somewhat clean here no nah, i didn't go all the way up to the top it was uh man i i, I don't know what was so nerve-wracking about this i i guess it was that um it was just open down below and I didn't want to like fall onto somebody's head, but it wouldn't have mattered. It's a tiny whoop, right? Like, I, I don't know why I was being, man, it, I, my, my heart was pumping. My, my hands were sweaty. Like, I mean, I guess with the, with the walk snail rig, um, I was worried about crashing it hard and breaking it because like this is not a freestyle rig, right? Like th this the way that this canopy and everything is mounted here just with long screws um, If this slams hard, it's gonna break, but it's just gonna break the screws probably or, or break the frame and like whatever um, So yeah, I don't know that was that was weird, but uh, I got some good flying and why is this motor? Feel hard to spin is that just me? Have I lost my mind? I think it's fine. It's fine. I think it's fine. Uh, welcome, friends. Q&A live stream. We're going to get some work done on the AOS 3.5, a little bit more work done on the AOS 3.5. Um, we're probably going to talk tiny whoops because we always do. And yeah, I got the um, the iGAO motors back on the jungle gym basher last night. Um, I was just cleaning the desk up a little bit and I realized that the, um, what I was about to do, if the snowblowers, if I hadn't, um, stripped out the mount base on that one snowblower, I was about to put white motors on a gray frame. I had a, a clear white frame, uh, Mobula 7 V4 frame sitting over there. Um, so I decided to throw these blue motors back on this gray frame and I'm putting the, the white motors on the, I think I already did it. Look how cool this looks. Um, can you believe I almost didn't do this? Like, oh, farts. There are screws popping out everywhere. Um, here we go. Okay. Mm, there's one screw missing. That's annoying. Uh, but yeah, look at that. The white motors on the white frame. That just works. <laughs> like, that's the way that it should be. So, now, that is the way that it is. So, yeah. Crisis averted, friends. That was a, that was a close one. We almost, uh, we almost let ourselves not look better than we flew. Fly. Fly, flu, flu, fly. So, yeah, these, uh, these blue motors are going to hang out on this frame. Um, basically, the, um... The uh, Mobula 7 walk snail. I couldn't think of the word walk snail. Uh, where am I at with this? He's got a little hat on. What do you think of that? It covers up his big, silly antenna. Uh, 
Where am I at with this? It's on... I think I just have to set this up in beta flight. Why did I just... Was there something I was waiting on with this? Was it the screws? I think I'm waiting on screws. Oh, man. This canopy just broke. Because of the way this screw is pulling down on it, the canopy broke. Yeah, this is... The way that these canopies mount are, are really not good. It's it's a really ridiculous way of, of mounting um, the canopy. Like, it pulls down on the walk snail, and it's, like, pushing on the chips. Um, it's not a great mounting system. I, I, I almost feel like I need to put a little spacer. I mean, now I definitely do, because this broke. But... Um, I need to figure out some sort of like an M1. So these are M1.2 screws that our tiny whoops use. Um, so basically what I need is to find like an M1.2 spacer. But I mean, see, here's the other problem. Like I just unscrewed this and there's just like, there's just no thread engagement. Like I think that is what I'm waiting on for this is a, um... yeah, see that ain't going to work, man. Uh, yeah, this needs some loving. Um, I think what I'm going to do with this, I bought an extra one. I think I remember. Um, it's not the cable, it's the camera. I was going to switch the, uh, the camera out. This is the big heavy camera. I bought one of the extra light cameras. I think it's right back here. Hell yeah. So, light camera is going to get put onto here, um, with a uh, Mobula 6 canopy. Th this canopy fits a lot better. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it most certainly does. Although it looks like I need the three post version, but I can just cut the front mounting point off of this other Mobula 6 canopy. Out of all the canopies so far, this like OG ass Mobula 6 upside down ball sack looking um, <laughs> canopy works the best um you just need to clearance it ever so slightly on on the left and the right but that's that's no big deal um so yeah let me uh let me remind myself by putting these in a bag um so this this guy needs this camera and come on uh and i ordered another canopy which I just stumbled across, which is right here. Um, so it also gets this canopy. And okay, so that's this guy. And I'm going to put that right here because I do want to uh, to work on that. Hey, I still have these Tiny Whoop 0603 26,000s for sale. This will be an excellent rig for one of these Mobula 7 motors uh, builds. Uh, as long as you're not going to crash it super hard. These only have one millimeter motor shafts, so I would not... I put these on the Jungle Gym Basher, and they flew fucking am amazing. But the problem is with the one millimeter shaft, although they do reduce the weight of this thing to the point where maybe it would be okay, but I'm not going to chance it. On For me, with how hard I crash all the time, um, I would do... Um, I have to go with the one and a half millimeter motor shaft motors. Um, but for those of you that aren't so dumb, uh, these would be a great motor for a bi-blade 75 millimeter rig. Technically though, they're still good on a 65 millimeter rig. You'd put a tri-blade on it and they're really nice. Um, but Jesse sent me prototype 603s that are 30,000 kV and I really like those on these 65 millimeter rigs. So these gotta go. Um, if you're interested, message me and uh, I'll make you a good deal. So yeah, there's that. Uh, I'm still looking for the four-port version of this Lumineer balance board. They make one that looks like this. Um, ask your friends for me. Ask them if they have uh, white Lumineer Paraguard balance boards. And if they do, ask them if they have the four-port or the six-port. If they have the four-port, I will pay an obscene amount of money for it. Not really, but I'll trade them for the six-port, among other things. Uh... And then this guy needs a replacement canopy which I have right here. So I'm gonna put this into a little bag. This canopy that I put on here at the time is the only one that I had and I didn't notice that it was broken. 
And I think because of the fact that it's broken, the camera is just ever so slightly tilted. Um, and this thing is hard enough to fly when I'm chasing the little drift cars. I don't want to make it any harder by having the camera off center at all. Um, so yeah, got to get that fixed. And now I can have my little snow hat on a different quad over here. I'll put it on this guy because he's all purple. Look at him. Whee! And yep. Uh, these iGao 802 27,000s, I think, are going to end up on the Walksnail 75mm rig. Um, because it's heavier than this Jungle Gym Basher. And I think eventually this thing is going to end up on the snowblowers once uh, Jesse sends me a replacement. Speaking of, I feel like he might have messaged me back. Um, I think he might have messaged me back, so that's good. Uh, in the chat, RT was first, Hockey Rounds was next, Left Step, Stavel, Matthew, Matthew Karam... Bob, Bruce, Morton, Upshot, Frank, Nicholas, Left Step, uh, UMOP3. Um, you mope, please, Dan, maybe? I don't know. UMO is here. Ed K. Morton, Upshot, uh, Black Jungle. Black Jungle is a, uh, is, uh, Black Jungle, I think, is a DayZ player. <laughs> that has found me here on the YouTube. Uh, Kevin Sumner, Denzel, the terrible E. Felton, Bitter Root. Uh, there's UMO again. Kevin Sumner, Douglas Otwell. Uh, Hypnos. Off-axis FPV, Sleepy CBR, Mr. Blue Sky. Brandon's Baked Beans, Bitter Root, Brandon, uh, Mick Mucus. Do, 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 do. Sorting through the repeats here. CMYK FPV, uh, Danzilla Brandon, Bitterroot, Stavel. I think I got most of you. If you want the gangly man to say say your name out loud, you got to come into the chat early and say something. If you want to talk directly to me, though, all you got to do is type CID FPV. When you do that, it'll light up an orange like that, and I'll know you're talking to me. If you don't do that, I'll assume you're talking to each other. Uh, Stavel FPV said, hey, yo. Bob Bruce says, what's up, everyone? What's happening? There we go. Uh, CMYK says, what's up? Ciadi FPV and Gangly Gang. Freeloader says, incredible shot going up. I know, right? Th those, that, that's, man, that hotel. If I ever go back to Nashville, even if I'm not staying at that hotel, I'm flying the shit out of that lobby again. I, and, and like, there's no reason not to. There's no, like, security or anything. Like, you could just walk right in the front door of that place, um, go up to the second floor and stand exactly where I was standing. And, yeah, I was there for, like, 45 minutes flying. Nobody said a goddamn thing. I mean, it was like midnight. Uh, I would really like to have stayed up all night <laughs> and and went down there at like 3 or 4 a.m. Um, that, that's what I was kind of hoping for. But uh, the Friday, uh, we worked 15 hours at the, at the Monster Jam event. And then the Saturday, we worked 16 hours. So I was, I was, yeah it being midnight and me not being asleep was pushing it already. Uh, but yeah, if I ever go back to Nashville, I'm going to, I'm going to fly that again, hard, way harder. The, one of the really interesting things was that, um, like I wanted to play around more in that area with those lights, but it was incredibly disorienting when you would invert because it was really hard to tell what was up and what was down. Like that area was so narrow and tall that when you would invert, the ceiling versus the ground were so far away that it was hard to see them. So it made it like really, di like I got really dizzy. Every time that I inverted, I got super dizzy, which is why the, the dives you were seeing me do were just rolling over into them, like almost split essing, but not quite as violently. Like split essing, you, you really do a, a, a complete invert on roll and then you pull down. Um, when I was doing that, when I was doing just a clean invert, I, I was, yeah, I was just literally getting dizzy. It was really crazy. So I ended up just doing like the kind of skateboard drop in that, that we do a lot, um, to, to kind of keep my bearings because like, as soon as you chop the throttle, like you are hauling ass downwards and those globes are like coming up at you. Um, so yeah, next time I fly that place, 
maybe I'll be on props in because um, I really want to try to figure out what the deal is with um, tiny. Well, I mean, I kind of know what it is, but I, I want to see if I can improve the performance of tiny whoops when they're diving. Um, what's really weird is when I dove that 1400 foot tower, it, it was not doing it nearly as bad um, as in this area. Although actually maybe it was because when I did that tower dive, I was outside and there was just infinite space in front of myself, right? When I was in that hotel, like that's not big. That's maybe like a hundred feet across. So I turned down for the dive and if it charges forward 50 feet, I'm like in panic mode because I'm going to start to run out of, of space on the way down. Um, so yeah, 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 there's that. Um, if you're at, if you're anywhere near Nashville, message me and I'll tell you the name of the place. I don't want to like put that place on blast and have everybody um, <laughs> go in there all at once. But um, yeah, let me know if, if you want that. You want the name of that place, and uh, I will let you know if you're going to be in Nashville. All right. So what else is happening here? Uh, there's some good questions popping up in the chat already. Matthew Karam says, how much does that walk snail rig weigh compared to the analog version? Um, what a great question. It is a 6.2 gram difference, I believe. Let's, uh, let's confirm that though. This is the ultimate freestyle tiny whoop. There is nothing that will ever touch this on digital. Um, this is the best flight performance that you're ever going to get out of a tiny whoop. 32,000 kV motors, Meteor 65 frame, um, happy model, Mobula 6 ELRS AIO, um, and then the Mobula 6 canopy and run cam nano 3 camera with a true RC singularity antenna inside. If you want slightly better flight performance, but slightly worse video, you take the singularity antenna out and replace it with just a, a, the lightest possible linear whip antenna. This thing used to be less than 19 grams. Why is it 19.5 now? I think it was less than 19 grams when I didn't have the singularity on it. That would make sense. So 19.5 grams. This is the walk snail version. Same exact setup. Ex uh, yeah, down to like the singularity antenna. This also has a little tiny singularity antenna in it. Um, but, <clears throat> oh wait, no, not the same setup. This is the beta FPV cross AIO. Uh, the one that all the racers use, um, and then Walksnail, of course. And then this is also on 702s. It's now on the Weebleed 702 um, 32,500 kV motors. This one motor, there's something There's something going on with it. Let's get all piratey real quick. Hold on. Every once in a while, this motor like kind of binds up a little bit, it feels like. I don't know what's going on with that. I'll figure it out. Um, so 19.5 versus, wow, it's lighter than I thought, 25 even. So 25.1. So 5.6 grams is the difference. Um, same frame, same canopy, same motors, same propellers, same little tiny um, uh, BT 2.0 lead. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much same everything on these two. Not a big weight difference um, when you look at it as 5.6 grams. It is a big weight difference when you look at it in terms of percentage. That is a 25% weight gain, right? It's actually more than a 25% weight gain. That would be the equivalent of taking a 600 gram 5 inch freestyle rig and making it 750 grams. That's massive. That is a massive difference. If you've ever flown a light and then a heavy five inch rig, like it's night and day. Um, it's even more noticeable on tiny whoops because we don't have 10 to one power to weight ratios yet. And I, I don't know if we ever will. Um, so yeah, you really, 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 really notice the, the weight difference when it comes to like hardcore freestyle stuff. Um, if you're just doing like cinematic stuff, what are you doing flying a tiny whoop? Um, but at the same time, like, yeah, okay, you won't notice it as much. Um, but 
This flies phenomenal with the walk snail setup. It's really ridiculous how good this flies. But this is just this is this is outrageous. This is absolutely absurd. Um, and uh, yeah, I I love it with every molecule of my body. The stuff that you can do with that build, um, it, it's just silly. It really, really, really is silly. Um, and it'll be even better when I get another one of those clear Mobula 6 canopies so that it looks good again. Because right now I'm like appalled by the way that it looks. Um, it looked so good when it had that clear frame on it. I, I should have kept that extra clear frame, but I did that build to, to get into the hands of one of you beautiful people. Um, and, and that's cool too. So, uh, all right, people, somebody tag me over on uh, discord. Hey, this is my full-time job. <laughs> I'm getting people mixed up. I don't, I don't think I am getting people mixed up. I, I think that there's somebody in, um, I think there's somebody in Daisy, uh, by the, uh, with the same name as uh black jungle in in here i'm pretty sure there is i'm pretty sure there's somebody in 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 the server that i'm on in day z whose name is black jungle but now that you mention it black jungle of course um i know you from quad stuff you're the meme guy <laughs> are you okay with being known as the meme guy <laughs> i hope you are i assume so because joshua like you know uh, always refers to you by your memes. Um, Brandon's McBean says, you're falling faster than the props are letting air pass through the ducts, so you might just need more throttle for that speed of dive to prevent it from acting like an air dam and washing. Interesting. Super interesting. I never, I, I always think of, of wind up from a perspective of a bad aerodynamic system, right, ducts, um, causing instability, and then the PID loop firing up to fight that instability. Super interesting thought, Brandon. I mean, here's, here's, my, only, uh, here's my only counter to your point is that I would assume that the PID loop would find the perfect, like the, you know, air mode would, would give the PID loop enough authority to find the perfect RPM for the motors to sit at for the least amount of turbulence. Um, Super the, the the aerodynamics of ducted rigs are ridiculous. It's it's very 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 weird, and like yeah, I want I really want to do some props in props out testing. I I have to find a spot to uh to test that head to head. I, I have to find like <laughs> I have to I was about to say I have to find a narrow shaft dive. Um, yeah, I, I have to find something that's like three or four stories high that I can kind of like reference off of, that I can drop down and reference off of. What could that be? I'll just have to drive back up to Nashville <laughs> and do that spot again. That's what I'll have to do. McMucus says, howdy from Peru, dudes, and see PV. McMucus, you don't, you're not usually in Peru. What are you doing in Peru? Uh, we're all very jealous. Mo FPV says just built a one S walk snail, uh, baby tooth tonight. Really, uh, liking walk snail lately. Uh, that's going to be super fun. Uh, that's what I think I'm going to do with the, um, the heavy camera, the heavy walk snail camera that's on the, um, 75 millimeter rig right now is build a toothpick with it. It's not going to be a baby tooth. It, it's going to be like a two S toothpick. I think. Um, but we'll see. Savala FPV says waiting on the cable for the walk snail. Um, no, I'm good. I, 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 I found, uh, the cable. I had it. Um, which is nice. Andrew DeCavia says, CMYK dropping the CIDFPV.com link. Thank you, dude. Um, this is my full-time job. If you like this content and would like to see it continue, head on over to CIDFPV.com 
And there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can support me. This is my streaming schedule, Sunday at 3, Monday at 10, Wednesday at 6, Friday at 7. This is just a YouTube link here. These are all the different ways you can help me out. Patreon definitely helps me the most. It's the closest thing that I have to a paycheck. And you get a whole bunch of benefits from it. Um, uh, 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 YouTube playlist with 90 unreleased uh, Patreon-only live streams, like sketchy flying, half-done edits, all kinds of weird stuff. Um, you're going to get access to two different Facebook groups, one for selling your stuff, the other one for hanging out with your fellow uh, chat friends here. You're going to get full access to the Discord channel and a bunch of other random stuff. Well, and, and access to all of the technical articles that I have up on the Patreon it itself. Lots of good benefits for you by joining the Patreon. A um, couple different ways that you can uh, spend your hard-earned money to help me. Etsy, I've got some stickers and some random micro hardware that might help you out on your next build. Fiverr, you can work one-on-one -on -one with me. You don't have to go through Fiverr. You can just message me on Instagram or Facebook. But if you want some protection because you think I'm going to rip you off, Fiverr is totally fine. They take a small percentage. I think it's only 13%. Um, I can help you with flight instruction, tuning, build planning, or whatever you'd like. Um, I usually stick with things that are like kind of FPV 102 related. I'm not the best guy in the world at like, hey, I just started. I need to get up in the air. I can do that, but it's just not really what my strong suit is. Uh, my strong suit is taking somebody that already knows what they're doing uh, that is starting to get good and help them to the point where they're going to get great. Um, that's really what... Uh, yeah, that's that's what I do best and, and that's what I enjoy doing to be completely honest uh, over on Teespring I got some really fun apparel that you might dig PayPal is better than super chats because they don't take 30% and then I've got a ton of affiliate links If you're ever doing an order from anywhere on the internet someone probably has an affiliate link Do all of us that create content a huge favor and see if you can hit an affiliate link before you order things on the internet I have affiliate links for uh, links for Weebleed FPV, Newbie Drone FPV Cycle, Amazon Get FPV, Oh My God's website, HD Zero, Flywee, Max Banggood, Camera Brother, AliExpress, and pretty soon I'll have one for uh, Brain 3D as well. Uh, that's how you support me. That's how you keep this stuff going. Um, and hey, you know, the more of you give me that give me a couple bucks a month, the more stuff that we can test, and the more food that I can eat. So you'll get to see me get fat. That's never gonna happen. It's worth a try, though, isn't it? Uh, let me scroll back up. Oh, uh, YouTube did the thing. Freelo just says, uh, check beta FPV for spacer. Any specific spot for it? I'm sure it's not under here as spacer. No, it's not. Um... Any rough idea what the name of it is? Um, well, that's pretty cool. Oh, shit. That's super cool. Hold on. I need a minute to just bathe in this. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm going to waste some time with this. I'm leaving this opened in a separate tab. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Back to the show. What is this? What? Yo, they got all kinds of fun stuff on here. It doesn't really need to be CNC, though. It just needs to be plastic. I, I, I Don't. This is going to be heavy. It's so heavy that they don't even tell you what it weighs. I mean, for a 5-inch rig, who cares? But... Uh, yeah, no, I'm not into that. This is pretty slick. They sell a recovery dongle. I just wanted to say recovery dongle out loud. Um, I wonder if they don't have... No, this is their spot for hardware. Yeah, because see... Oh, look, they have these again. Ooh, they did not have these for a long time. This is what you need for the uh, for the tiny lifter. Oh, I mean, it's easy enough to make one, but it's super cool that they're uh, that they're pre-made for. I'm actually gonna leave that tab open as well. Uh, damn, last time I was on Beta FPV's website, I, I didn't really find anything. Uh, these are close, but no cigar. These are just press nuts for M2. 
Um, hmm, not seeing any spacers. Look at that. Look at those hydro dipped frames. Good lord. Um, I mean, they do have this uh, rubber damper. I guess I could use a, a rubber grommet. Um, I have this kit. I, I love this kit, actually, because it's got three different thicknesses of uh, rubber grommets for different thicknesses of PCB. Like, so for really, for really skinny PCBs, you can use this black one. See the slot in the middle there is really skinny. For really thick PCBs, you can use that blue one. And then somewhere in the middle, you can use those clear ones. Really, really cool stuff. Um, yeah, I don't see any specific spacers, but uh, I am going to leave these tabs open because, yeah, that's these, this, oh, there's two different versions of it. Oh, God, I'm getting them both. Oh, boy. Happy days are here at last. And these guys, this is great that these guys exist again. They were out of stock forever. All right. Uh... <laughs> Sorry for that little tangent there. Uh, CMYK says... Uh, why haven't I ever thought about bagging stuff together? My drone decks is a mess. Yeah, man. Um, the uh, these, these propeller bags, these five-inch propeller bags, have organized my entire life. I have everything in these bags. Um, they are the exact right thickness of plastic. Like, they're, they're significantly thicker than, like, Ziploc bags, which really makes a difference. Like, the Ziploc bags just don't hold up. Um, they get all, like, stretched out and dented and ripped. Um, these bags, I, I literally just have everything in these bags. Everything in the garage, everything up in the kitchen, everything everywhere that I can organize. And this is, like, it's it's not too big, it's not too small, it's, it's so nice. And most of us have a million of them because, you know, we hoard things. Um, so yeah, and, and they're, they're great size for, for build bags. I literally call them build bags and it's how I organize stuff so that, you know, like I'll have this build in this bag and then I'll think like, oh, 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 this is a perfect battery strap for this build and I'll put the battery strap in there and then like, oh, I changed my mind. I want to run this different camera in this build. I'll swap the camera in. So it, it, and yeah, it just works really, really well, man. Really well. Um, Black Jungle says, uh, most people told me that 0602s were okay for 65 millimeters, but underpowered for 75 millimeter. So someone tried 602s a long time ago, um, and they were just no good. And and I, I, I would, uh, yeah, I've talked to Jesse about them, <clears throat> and we both kind of agree that 702 is really as small as we want to go. 702 is just barely enough stator volume for uh, the uh, by blades, the 1.2 inch by blades, 31 millimeter by blades on a 65 millimeter motor to motor tiny whoop. Um, so yeah, 602s are definitely a no go, but 702s are fantastic on these little 65s. Um, I would definitely not run 702s on a, a 75 millimeter motor to motor build with 1.6 inch props, even the by blades, it would not be enough motor. You want at least 603s or 802s. Um, I was really, really happy with how the 603s felt. Um, I was really shocked. But unfortunately, there's not a 603 with a one and a half millimeter motor shaft. So the 802s are the next best option. And that's fine. Like, that's a rig that's getting flown hard outside. So having a little bit more stator volume um, is definitely not a bad thing. It gives you, you know, the option of really making some serious power. So. Uh, David J says, first time catching you and Bardwell live in the same day. Glad to have you, David. Make yourself at home. Yarb says, uh, U-M-O-P-E is upside down if you twist your head. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> it's upside down. Nice. Uh... You know, it would be even more perfect if it was also an anagram. Uh, what else do we have here? Nasty FPV says, hey. 
Tromper says, what's up? Looking to fly? Looking fly. Good evening, everyone, he says. Uh, RT says, I'm in Nashville October 22nd through 27th. Which hotel? Uh, so I can see if I can book a room there. Message me, RT, and I'll tell you which one. It's kind of an expensive hotel, though, to be honest. The, um, uh, the production company put a bunch of us up there. Um, but it was, it was a nice hotel. Um, but again, no reason to stay there. You can just walk in there and dive the shit out of that lobby area. Uh, RT says, I already forgot, 65 millimeters with 32,500. Which props do you recommend? Again, gem fan by blades only. Um, the, the 702s only can really hang with a, with a gem fan by blade. Uh, if you go up to 603 or 802, you can move into the world of tri blades. Uh, I don't like them for freestyle, but for more grippy, racy style of flying, they, they're probably your best bet. Uh, CMYK dropping the CIDFTV.com link. Thank you, dude. Andrew D says, now that I've got stuff arriving, what's the best place to start to learn about ELRS? Completely new to FPV and any FPV cameras that are good in RC cars want to try with the cars too. Most people with RC cars don't do the FPV camera thing because it gives you nasty motion sickness. Um, they bounce all over the place and then when you're in the goggles with that, it's, it's a bit much. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know any real recommendations there other than like with RC cars, weight doesn't really matter as much. So just go digital with them just, and, and yeah, I mean, just throw a Vista in there and away you go. It would be my guess. Um, what's the best place to start to learn about ELRS here on YouTube? Just type in ELRS beginner ELRS tutorial. Uh, Joshua has got a bunch of videos. He's probably got the one video that you're going to watch to learn everything, but there will be some other ones out there. Um, yeah, everything you need to know is here. Although ELRS also has a great website, um, with tons of info. So there's nothing but info out there. I choose to watch, uh, Bardwell videos usually. So, uh, anybody want a set of, uh, newbie drone flow 802, 27,000. I don't know what to do with them. And then I've also got a set of 1102, 10,000s. newbie drone flow, 1102, 10,000s. Um, don't really know what to do with these, and I've got an awful lot of stuff, so I, I think it, I should just let them go. Hockey Round says, too bad we can't black box. Whoops. To be honest, it wouldn't really tell us much. Um, the, the vibrations from the mega RPM that these things use are up so high in the frequency band that they get filtered pretty hard no matter what. So... Um, whoops really like there there are some whoops that have been black boxed lately and we haven't really learned much of anything there, there really aren't any secrets there um it's a pretty easy to tune rig um if your electrical system your gyro your motors and props are all sound and not vibrating or creating lots of bullshit noise uh whoops are hysterically easy to tune uh, you take the gyro slider, the gyro filtering slider, and move it all the way up. You take the D-term filter slider, you move it up to like 1.2 or 1.4, uh, and then you can just go ham with your PIDs. I'm talking like master multiplier up to 1.6, 1.8, even 2.0, um, and and they just fly beautiful like that. So, uh, hmm. where was I at? Here we go. Matthew Karam says, I'm in love with the Ultimate Freestyle build. It's become one of my favorite drones to fly. Insane how different whoops have gotten. And I only go into the hobby like eight months ago. Yeah, the the um, the performance of whoops has exploded. It, it's mind-blowing. Stevie says, was your lobby footage on walk snail? I'd be interested to see you fly analog and walk snail side by side in there. Um, the past, like, two or three streams at the beginning and the end of the streams uh, was me flying in that lobby uh, analog. I mean, I might as well just... Pull it up right now, though. There's no reason not to. I copied the files over. Um, here's me flying analog. Well, we'll start off with with walk snail so that we do like a little head to head. Um, so yeah, here's walk snail in there, and then at the end of this, we'll do um, we'll do a little bit of analog in there for you. Let me just uh, pull this over here so I can read the chat. Mm. Mick Mucus says, remind people to shrink wrap the metal end of that true RC on you so, antenna so you don't fry your board. Lost a couple AIOs that way before I went back to a whip antenna. 
Um, Mick, are you talking about the little lock that they give you? Look at that big freeze when it hit the ground. That was interesting. I didn't notice that before. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a good idea to shrink wrap the end of your UFLs anyway. Uh, sometimes on boards, there's a um, there's an Ishin Nano VTX that's like this. And I think there are a couple of Tiny Whoop AIOs that are like this. The, the UFL, if you plug where the UFL is, there'll be a component right next to it. And if you spin the naked bare metal UFL just wrong and it touches that component, uh, it can blow the AIO up. So what you want to do, let's pause this for one second. What you want to do is just take a tiny little piece of shrink wrap. You should do this to all of your uh, UFL antennas. Just take a little tiny piece of shrink wrap and get it right there, right on that UFL. And you'll never have that problem. Do this to all. This also makes the connection between the wire and the head a lot stronger. So you just want to do this on all of your, um, yeah, all of your UFL antennas. That's a, that needs to be a best practice for sure for everyone all the time. Uh, Hornet says UAV tech rep recommends props in for whoop, something about y'all authority and washouts. Um, so, uh, Mark recommends props in for Cinewoops. Um, I've never seen him do any testing with Whoops. Uh, it works really well with Cinewoops. It makes a really big difference from Cinewoops. It, it's, it's night and day, especially when you drop altitude uh, right side up. When you're just flying along and you chop the throttle, Cinewoops are, are nasty uh, when they're props out. Uh, but when they're props in, it almost completely fixes that problem. I have never sent a Cinewoop down into like a big nasty dive to see if it makes any difference there. Um, and Cinewoops are actually significantly more different than Tiny Whoops than you'd think, mainly because of the center of gravity. So there's Walk Snail, and now here comes, um, here comes Analog. Uh, so yeah, uh, I've, I've tested it once in the house and I didn't really see any difference. Um, just face first into that, <laughs> into that globe. Um, yeah, I've tested it and I didn't see any difference here in the house. The, the ceilings are pretty high up in the living room, maybe like 20 feet, but it's, it's not enough, you know, like in the first two seconds, not even. I've covered 20 feet in here, right? So like like the living room testing I've done was basically like, ready? From, I'm gonna say now to now, ready? From now to now. And you know, that just doesn't give it enough time to like fall, uh, to, to gain enough speed to, um, to start ramping up and, and to start getting the weird aerodynamic situation going. So yeah. Um, Tiny whoops, uh, yeah, they might be different. They, they might be a di also aerodynamically, right? The cine whoop has a big ass camera, a big vertical blocker in, for the camera right up front. Tiny whoops are much more aerodynamic. They got that central canopy, central camera set up. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of a whole different thing. Uh, but I'm going to test it. it. It could very well uh, help with tiny whoops. I, I, I just, I haven't had a spot to test it enough, but I will because I'm, I'm super interested in it. And, um, worst case scenario, uh, next year, I, I have a feeling they'll bring me back on for monster jam in Nashville. I can go to this place and do an even better, uh, dive there. So that'll be cool. I also want to try to calm down a little bit more here and, and like play around a little bit more. Um, cause like there's the elevators to play around there. There's another little, um, uh, gap to the right right now for you guys. It would be this, this would be the right, um, yeah, there were some other spots that I wanted to dive, but I was, I was, th the main thing that I was doing is trying to figure out how to deal with the, the, the motors ramping up. I, I was trying to figure out like, do I go through the middle of the globes? Do I like drive around in the globes? Um, and, and I just like forgot to do other stuff. I, w I was so like taken by this challenge of 
how do I get around it? How do I get around what the mechanical system is doing and fly it in a way that's like insane? Like, see, I, I hate just spinning one direction. I really wish I'd gone like and done basically figure eights around it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just didn't have the, uh, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't, uh, <laughs> I, w I think I was just trying to get like that one main dive to look as good as possible. So I was figuring out like, is that starting off on the side and then driving it into the middle? Was that, I, what I really wanted to do though, is the whole dive right down the center. Cause there was a, there was a gap down the entire center and having all the globes going by above, below, left, right is the look that I wanted. But every time I started in the center, it would push me quicker. So that's why you see me go into the side and go into that corner and initiating there and then letting it drive me through like diagonally almost. Um, but yeah, you know, that is, uh, those are my favorite things on earth to try to troubleshoot, right? Like that's, that's the most fun troubleshooting ever. <laughs> it's like, how do I dive this, <laughs> this hotel lobby area and avoid these things looking as cool as possible? I'm, I'm mind blowingly lucky to, to be able to do that. Uh, Brands by Bean says the pit loop is really lame at idle because, um, of just how the air mode mixer is. It has very little authority. So much more thrust linear would help with zero throttle dive instability. Interesting more thrust linear, huh? I run my thrust linear pretty low under the thinking of, I don't want it to ramp up um, when I'm inverted and take away from my hang time. But what you're saying is super interesting with more thrust linear, it might've been able to match the RPMs of the propellers better to the airspeed coming through them. That's super cool. That is very, very cool. McMucus says, going to punk shows, what else is there to do in Peru? Stavl says, uh, anyone travel through TSA with their whoops? I tried looking up the requirements uh, for the LiPos, but it wasn't clear. Uh, also said, check with airlines for drone travel. Um, I have flown with drones a dozen or so times. Um, every single time, as long as I have put my LiPos in a separate bag, a separate Kevlar bag, uh, you know, fireproof bag, that I then put into the to the plastic bucket, I've been completely fine. Every time that I've forgotten that, and I have left even one single lipo in my carry-on flight bag, they have pulled my bag and tossed my bag. Um, under the X-ray, lipos look like little bombs. I think um, so. They, see, they I guess the X-ray can't see through it, and it's just like this little pouch. Um, so yeah, I assume that lipos look scary, but when you put them in the little plastic bin, they don't seem to care. I don't know. I don't know if they look and see that it's a lipo fire safe bag and they're like, oh, okay. Or they just don't look as closely at the things that go in the, in the bins, I guess. I don't know. Uh, freeload dro dropping the Patreon link. Thank you, dude. McMucus. Uh, we got that. Uh, P. Richard Scott's in the house. What's up, homie? Freelojo says, uh, I got some with uh, I got some with a beta FPV HD 1S cam that are gummy. Uh, what color are they, Freelojo? Are they either clear or black or blue? Uh, P. Richard Scott says, all those weight adding decals. <laughs> Freelojo says, uh, were those water dip decals? They are. And that's what I'm excited about because regular stickers don't really stick to quads because everything on quad, everything on our, our uh, well, I mean, I guess five inch rigs would be fine, but on tiny whoops, everything is rounded, right? So you, you put a regular sticker on and it just crinkles up around the outsides and peels off. Those water transfer stickers are super malleable. So yeah, I can actually use the damn things. That'll be cool. Uh, Bitterroot named his Chromecast Big Dongle. Mine. One of my memory cards is named Wanglebork. Uh, Free Ledger, so, oh, we got that. YouTube just did the thing. Scrolling back up. Uh, there we go. Mo FPV says, what's the next event you're going to, man? Um, I don't really go to many events. Uh, it, it, I, I, I just basically don't make quite enough money to, to be gallivanting around. Um, I live a pretty tight, I live on a pretty tight budget um, to uh, 
yeah, being a content unless you're like one of the absolute top, 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 top content creators, um, it's very difficult to to make more than like, let's say thirty thousand dollars a year. Um, and yeah, living in like suburbia, Georgia is not cheap. It's not super expensive, but um, yeah. So it's uh, it's it's hard for me to like Maggie and I will plan a trip or two a year with the family. Um, but for me to just like plan a for pleasure trip just for me is kind of a bit much. Um, I go to Rampage every year because they pay me. Um, and that kind of tends to be it. Rampage is, is typically like the only trip that I do, uh, the, the event that I do. So yeah, I know that's not a great answer, but, um, it's the real answer. You know, there's, there's, I have to, uh, yeah, I have a set of priorities and, and this family is at the top of that list of priorities. I get so much FPV in my life from you guys and these live streams and everything that's going on that like, I don't feel like I need to go on, go to the events or, or on vacations. Like so much of my day every day is taken up by FPV that like an FPV event is, it, it's not like a vacation to me. It as it, like it was when, um, when this was all just like a hobby for me, if that kind of makes sense. So I'm, I'm not typically like super driven to go to the events, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, the main reason is just that it's expensive to travel and I'm on a pretty tight budget. Um, but I wouldn't have it any other way, man. I, I, I will live like this doing FPV work, um, until the day that I die rather than going back into an office and, um, using my degree <laughs> for, Although my degree is in TV radio, so doing project management is not really what I got my degree for, but my degree allows me to make a lot of money in project management, so I guess it kind of works. Um, David J is looking to get into whoop racing, first uh, race later this month. Any good content creators slash racers out there? Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's any specific whoop racers that are actually making content. I'm sure that there are, but um, not here on YouTube, at least. There's a ton of guys on Instagram that are doing all kinds of cool stuff. Um, I would just uh, just search, like, hashtag whoop racing or something like that. You'll find a whole bunch of people. Um, but, yeah, like, me and Infinity Loops and iGow are, like, the main whoop content creators. Nick Burns, too, I guess. Um, but we're all freestyle guys. I, I guess Nick Burns is probably the closest to a racer um that you're gonna get and his his content is all phenomenal so yeah check out nick burns that's that's probably your best bet uh rc flyer says i ordered a few aos t3s for hd0 toothpick any recommendations um uh no i mean i i think that's a a, a great that's probably the perfect frame um for an hd toothpick so yeah i think you ordered the the just the right frame so yeah, no no recommendations on like uh, anything different. Uh, I'm also not like a super big toothpick guy anymore. I I I, I um, was when I first started in the hobby, but uh, I kind of drove the the toothpick super lightweight three inch thing into the ground just by flying thousands and thousands of batteries on it my first year and a half in the hobby. Um, so yeah, I don't have a, a super great feel for recommendations on the rest of the build. What I can say though is to jump onto FPV Cycle. Um, Bob Rugi really has done a great job curating some of the best parts that are out there. Um, so if it's in stock on FPV Cycle, it's probably the best uh, or at least one of the best. Um, they used to have a Tune RC AIO on there. Uh, that I think was the go-to. Check out um, Quad 66, Q U A D 66, here on YouTube. I just typed into the chat for you. Um, he is another phenomenal toothpick, tiny whoop um, uh, content creator, tester, engineer, pilot. You're gonna love it. Uh, RC Flyer, no, we got that. Freeloader says, how much for the 802 27,000s? Uh, message me. I don't, I, I don't even know. Uh, less than what they are new. 
Justin the guy says, uh, I'll message you about those 1102-10,000. Sounds good. Uh, Hornet says, please, sir, what could cause diagonal motors to be much hotter than their counterparts? Um, and between those, one is much hotter than the others. Motors two and three. Number three is scorching hot. Uh, so the easiest way, I think, to begin that troubleshoot is to take those two motors and reverse them. Don't do that. Don't do that. Take those, take those two motors. So you're saying two and three. Wait, so for you, it's like this. The, the back rear motor is one. So if I look at the screen, whatever. What, whatever those two motors are, move them like that. So reverse the motor, reverse motors one and two and three and four and see if the problem chases the motors or see if the problem stays in the same place. Um, that will tell you if it's an ESC problem or if it's a motor problem. While you're at it, make sure that the motors all spin freely. I know that sounds like a dumb suggestion, but uh, it's very easy for uh, these motors to, to have like a physical blockage and that makes more of a difference than you could possibly imagine. So yeah, do that. Um, uh, what else we got going on here in chat? Hornet says, I tried, I tried on both and it helps on both. I had a 65 millimeter that was y'all washing out props and fixed it instantly. Interesting. The, so here's the other issue with props in versus props out. Um, during yaw movements, we, we went from props in to props out on tiny whoops before everything else. Um, and the reasoning was that it was such a low power system that when you would yaw and roll at the same time, the, the roll would fire up, in this case, motors one and two, and the yaw would fire up motor one. And it would overwhelm motor one. We would ask too much of motor one and it would drop It would drop that corner. By going to props out, in that same situation, it would fire these two motors for the roll, but then it would fire motor three for the yaw. And so it allowed tiny whoops to carve corners a lot harder and it fixed a lot of flight problems and it actually fixed yaw washout significantly. Um, now that that was back in the days of brushed tiny whoops though with really low power uh, power trains now that we've got 32,000 kV motors um, the the situation could be different and and that in that scenario there might not be a need um, to have the the right so like with with many things there's no free lunches. You can't like just do a thing and everything is good unless like, you know, you go from like, unless you basically throw a bunch of money at it, right? If, if you're just like making changes, there's almost always going to be um, side effects. And so back then, maybe that was the right choice because that problem was like really nasty. Nowadays that we have the power, maybe that choice doesn't make sense anymore. Um, I'm going to find out. Damn it. CV says, thanks, you demand same flight experience from analog to digital. Much love, much love from Hot Lake City. Um, very different flight experience with digital. The, the, extra, um, the extra weight is, uh, it, it really, um, it just dominates the flight experience. Like, yeah, it's, it's great to be able to see where you're going with the, with the HD setups, but they're tiny whoops, so they don't really go all that fast anyway. So you kind of don't need to see. The, the great thing about HD is that you can see farther ahead. Something that the, one of the very first things that I would train students at the racetrack um, in my 20s and 30s was to look farther ahead. 
when when I, I would every once in a while I would have a student that would have a really hard time with that they would I would see their eyes and their head keep looking down as like the apex would go past or a cone would go past the car we would actually tape the bottom of the windshield up with masking tape so that they had to look out the top of the windshield out in front of the car because you wanted to be looking all the way out at the next corner so that you can start to get set up for it with tiny whoops with FPV it's even more important to look far ahead um, because we we can go everywhere that we're flying in spots where there might be people, right? Like this is at the racetrack where it's a totally controlled environment other than other drivers looping their cars. But um, yeah, with, with flying FPV, looking farther ahead makes a huge difference. And the HD systems allow you to do that, which is fantastic. Um, but tiny whoops are so slow that you lose a lot of the benefit there from like a flying perspective, right? Like I always look at stuff from the perspective of like, how can I fly? How, w everything that I do is geared towards helping me fly better um, rather than having me enjoy the experience more. Okay. So the, the walk snail rig is a way better flight experience. Like in terms of just putting the goggles on and enjoying yourself, um, enjoying like the majesty of hd flight like yes it's great for me though the enjoyment is doing nasty stuff right doing like a, a, a nasty power loop from perfectly through the the tiny whoop cube gate up through the gem fan gates in the ceiling right and the analog rigs do that better so it's it's um yeah the analog rigs are, are so much heavier that it's unmistakable um, in terms of flying each and when it, with the flight experience, but man, is it cool to fly a 35 or whatever gram it is all up weight quad with 720 or 1080, whatever the hell walk snail is. It, it, it's really, it's really a magical thing. And you almost don't want to throw it around. Like you almost just want to explore and just be a, a gnat. So it's interesting. E. Felton says, I built an AOS 3.5 Evo 03 with a Mamba 740 AOT motor, 1604, 2850 running 6S850. You or anyone else know a preset or a good starting point for a tune. Um, your best starting point is always the completely stock tune. It flies fantastic, especially if you've put together a powertrain, battery, motor, propeller, all up weight combination um, that is well with parts that have been well chosen, which it sounds like you have. Um, so yeah, fly it on defaults. And then if there's a problem, if it doesn't fly, if there's a problem, if there's a specific problem, then you're going to use the sliders to tune out that problem. Uh, but your starting point should always, 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 always be stock values. That way you don't arm it and have it fly up into your face full steam or just fly away forever in a never, never land. Um, and yeah, nowadays the stock tune is so good that a lot of people just leave it alone. Um, keep in mind, you know, like if you're trying to get better as a pilot, the more you push the tune, the worse you're going to be. Um, a tune that's really aggressive is going to cover up mistakes. And if you're trying to get better, you're not going to know that you're making those mistakes. Um, at the same time, a, a cranked up tune is going to... Um, not allow you to beat the rig up as much. So you really got to ask yourself, like, am I doing this for my own enjoyment or am I putting out content and trying to get e-famous on the internet? If you're trying to get e-famous, by all means, crank your tune up because I don't want to watch your wobbly ass shit. Um, if you're flying for yourself, there's no real reason to crank the tune up. The looser the tune is, the better you'll get as a pilot quicker and uh, the more you'll be able to beat the shit out of the rig and run it on banged up motors and props and just enjoy flying. So, um, yeah, going beyond the defaults on the tune, like do that for a reason. Don't just do it because you see me do it. You know, I do it because I want my footage to look good for you guys. Um, if you're not me, then maybe then you got to come up with another reason, <laughs> uh, in my opinion. Freelojo says the gummies are clear with small holes. Um, small holes, huh? Are, are they not meant for m2 hardware for your lojo uh mo fpv says completely understand uh hope to meet you one day i would love to meet all of you beautiful people um i was talking last year about doing 
like monthly get togethers here in Atlanta, but then I stopped flying freestyle. Um, and plus Atlanta is a hell of a trip for most people. And, and so, yeah, I don't know. We should at least do it like once a year though. I mean, there's no reason to not do it like once a year. Maybe I'll do it in the fall. It, right now it's just disgusting. It's, it's also hard. Like I would hate to, to schedule something and then it rains. Um, I don't think I would necessarily be able to bring everybody back here. Realistically, I can put like six people in this room, but then it's going to start to get crowded after that. Um, YouTube they just did the thing again. Paulie Shortcut says, I flew my DJI 3 inch toothpick build with the 1202 3S today. I've only flown 1 to 2S uh, Amaze Balls. Yeah, going up, going up from 1S to 2S or 2S to 3S is ridiculous. It's, it's such a uh, performance explosion. Denzel the Turbo says, uh, there are AOS tune presets in Betaflight made by Rosser, I think. That's pretty cool. If you have the exact same setup as what Chris had on his build, um, maybe those presets are, are a good idea. Um, I, I, I still think you should custom tune because if you, even if you have all the same components, if you do anything differently, if you, if you, uh, crank your the the nuts on the top of the flight controller harder um, or uh, if you don't yeah there's any number of things that you can do different during the build process um, that will make his tune too aggressive or yeah I don't know uh, Polly Shortcut says any update on the disarm death dive challenge it's <laughs> a good name for it um, I have not I don't think I've seen anything on the on the Patreon. <laughs> of course, as soon as I uh, on the uh, not Patreon on the uh, Discord. Let's see. Let's see if there's anything. I think I might have just seen something. Fail safe on the farm. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I missed the truck though. Thank God. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing anything. It, it looks like I'm, I'm kind of glad that nobody bit because I, I it's just, it, you're just going to lose. You're just going to lose your rig. I, I do kind of hope that somebody does it, but I really hope that they don't lose a rig doing it. I, like I would feel really bad about that. Um, but I can guarantee you somebody's going to do it. Somebody will do it for sure. Um, but yeah, I'm not super surprised that there's not 15 people doing it right now because it, it really is like, yeah, it <laughs> you're going to lose some shit. Freeloader said I was wrong. Same holes. Damn it. All right. Fair enough. Matthew Karam says a uh, reminder to do a fleet live stream to show uh, what you use all the builds for behind you. Thank you, Matthew. Um, maybe we'll do that on Friday. That could be a good thing to do on Friday. Fleet fleet out Friday. Um yeah, fleeting out Friday or something like that. That could be cool. Uh, Kiz Bartlett says, you mentioned you're not freestyle anymore. So are you ex exclusively pushing the cinematics? I mean, like, realistically, yeah. Like, not on purpose, Kiz. Like, and to be honest, like, like I, you know, everything that I do with Tiny Whoops is freestyle. So, like, w when I say I don't fly freestyle anymore, I I'm, I'm being a little dramatic. And basically just saying, that, like, I don't go outside to, to office parks and rail five-inch rigs around you know almost slamming into into people's parked cars um you know i did that a lot I, I flew thousands and thousands and thousands of batteries for that um in my second and third and fourth and fifth years flying um when i started flying cinematic gigs i really fell in love like i went to to school way back when in like 99 2000 2001 2002 three, four, um for tv radio and like my love has always been behind the camera um and cinematic scratches that itch as well as the whole fighter pilot itch so it, it's a it's a really it's a thing that just uh, yeah i just absolutely love it uh freestyle is the way to learn fpv for sure um i would not want to get into fpv and start flying cinematic right away um flying freestyle for a long time is definitely 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 the way to hone your skills in FPV and become a pilot that can deal with bad shit happening when you're flying cinematic so that you don't hit someone and hurt someone and potentially ruin it for all of us. Because 
every time that there's any kind of a drone accident, the entire film world finds out about it and, and goes like, maybe we don't want to bring FPV onto our next set. Um, and I've, I've been hired before and not been able to fly because the, the artist, it was Jack Harlow, um, just said no. He said, you know, he was at one of his shows in Europe. Uh, there was a DJI drone pilot that they hired to fly, and um, the, his tra- the battery in his transmitter died, I think, and that made the uh, that told the rig to return to home. Well, the return to home point was now filled with 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 the crowd, um, so it starts coming down on its own, and it would have just blendered right into the into the people's heads um, if he hadn't gotten uh, his transmitter powered back up. Uh, and so, yeah, he was just like, nope, I don't want drones anywhere around me. And that was that. I mean, I got paid, but I didn't get to fly. And it's about flying for me. So uh, that sucked. Um, so, yeah, freestyle is, is super important to uh, to being able to learn. Uh, and I've done a lot of it. And, and it's it, it's just not as... Basically, when I go fly... Like, freestyle here is super fun because it's different. It's new and it's fresh. And it's wild what Tiny Whoops can now do. Um railing around another parking lot it's it's just yeah it's um it's uh once you've done it thousands and thousands of times it's just kind of like okay now what uh, you know what i mean it, it just gets like whereas cinematic you can't do it here's the other thing right you can go out and fly freestyle five days a week six days a week seven days a week you're not gonna find a, a, a cinematic gig every day of the week right so it you you tend to like Burn it out a lot slower, basically. <laughs> uh, Dune Runner says, I want to build an awesome freestyle. Whoop, 65 or 75, which is better for a Jungle Gym Ripper? Um, outside stuff, 75. Inside stuff, 65. Um, 75s kind of suck inside. 65s are kind of okay outside, but 75s are definitely a little bit bigger. Better, better, better. Um, so, yeah, if you want to just build one for inside and outside, it's a 65 for sure. Um, if you want to build something for outside specifically, it's a 75 follow the formula that I've talked about a million times, um, which is just basically Mobula 7 ELRS 1S with the Tiny Whoop 0802 25,000 or 27,000 KV 1.5 millimeter motor shaft motors. Um, Kiz Bartlett says, we all have our preferences in the end. It's good to see you found your calling. Um, yeah, I mean, it's all, you know, it's all flying, right? I mean, it's all, it's all FPV. Different engineering challenges, different styles, um, but it's all flying and it's all the most fun thing in the world. And I'm so tired of my allergies. I've been struggling lately. All right. Caught up on chat. Let's get some work done. Friends. Great questions tonight. My guys much appreciate all the, uh, all the intelligent questions and comments and great discussions that we have. Sometimes I get a little carried away with them. We spend pretty much the entire live stream talking about them, but Hey, that's, uh, as I always say, the, the most value that I have, in my opinion, uh, is the Q&A stuff, is getting those discussions going, answering your guys' questions, talking about um, the stuff that you guys want to talk about, because, like, you know, the stuff that I want to talk about is, is pretty, like, pretty fucking nerdy, you know, <laughs> like, like I, I and, and I do talk about it a lot, right, like, I don't usually hold back, but if it were up to me, you know, for the entire two hour live stream, we would only talk about like the dynamics of 702s versus 603s versus 802s. Damn it. I had a feeling that was going to be the case. This doesn't, uh, this does not work. Um, okay. So what that means is that I'm going to use this antenna for one, as long as it's left hand circular polarized. Uh, designed for DJI. Yep. So we're going to use this. Oh, no, we're not because the cable's not long enough. God damn it. It's going to have to be up there. Yep. Nope. Not using that. Uh, okay. So this is me trying to figure out what antennas are going to go on this AOS three and a half. Uh, let me bust out my little box of DJI stuff right over here. 
Uh, you know what? Let me let me worry about this another time. Let's. Uh, I I put ESC in the title. Let's dive into the ESC. Let's not uh, let's not screw around with this. But these screws are. Uh, you know. I'll be all right. Wow, these screws are really small. I'm just gonna put them in the top of the screw holes here. All right. So there's one. Jesus. These are absurdly small. Holy cow, walk snail. What are you doing? Why would you make these so small? Holy Christ. Um, okay, hang on. Yikes. Oh, uh, come on now. Get in there. Get in there. Jeez. This is a job for the nut grabber. You can have your own nut grabber by going over to my Amazon. So the the my uh, my affiliate link for Amazon is the nut grabber. This is not a job for the nut grabber. This is actually too small. This screw is is too small for the damn thing. Um, wow, this is crazy. Okay. Maybe that'll get it. Oh my god, why? Holy cow, dude, this is, uh, I can't do this. Nut grabber is my affiliate link, that's what I meant to say. There we go, jeez. That is outrageous, one more. Nut grabber is my Amazon affiliate link. There we go. There's the full sentence I was trying to, I was struggling to get out of my big dumb mouth. Uh, okay, why are these here? What are these here for? So, let's get this out of the way. I'm still going to try to use that, but let's figure out a better way. Uh, okay, so what I want to see is um, I've got uh, a flight controller with crossfire here i want to see if um if this is the same flight controller as this one which is hooked up to this gs25 to make my life a little bit easier hopefully as long as it's the same flight controller and it appears that it is so these are talon flight controllers made by the uh, now gone heli direct unfortunately and they're actually made by CL Racing. And yep, these are the same ones. So that is great because I'm going to use this uh, ESC here. So I can just unplug this one, plug this one in, and now I've got the full McGillicuddy uh, ready to go. So let's unplug that one. And I can actually hook this one back up here. It, it's wired up. This little harness here is set up for something. I don't know what ESC it was, but uh, now, cool. So I can put this aside because we're just doing ESC stuff here. Um, I have to kind of decide where this is going to get mounted. I, I also, this ESC got kind of hot, and it melted these sort of rubber grommets that were in here. Um, and it got so hot that it like melted them. It's, it's kind of weird though. It didn't melt this one and I have no idea why. It's very, very strange. It's like it got really hot on just that one side. I also don't know uh, if this ESC is gonna work. I have a couple of ESCs that I pulled out of builds that I didn't label all that well. And I know that at least one of them is not going to work, and I really hope it's not this one, because I just put this build together, and the ESC effed up on it, and I threw that one away. Um, really don't. Uh, this is now going to be either the third or fourth ESC that I'm putting in this build. I'm having a hell of a time getting this thing up in the air, but we'll get there. We'll keep going. Um, yeah, these. These rubber grommets are just 
falling apart. I don't. I really don't understand. I, I feel like maybe they got some kind of a chemical on them that did this because I just, I, I don't know how Heat could have done this and I don't know why it would have done it to three of these but not the fourth. So yeah, I don't know. This is super weird. I, I don't remember what rig this ESC was even in. So yeah, I don't know. Morton Upshot says V1 has those stupid micro screws. V2 is M2. Nice. Uh, Paulie Shortcut says, what could be the problem when an analog camera starts putting dots in the blown out light areas? I would try to narrow it down to figure out if that's a, uh, that could be an OSD issue. Uh, so hook up a different camera and see if the problem stays or goes away. If the problem stays, it's an OSD issue. If the problem goes away, well, you got a new camera hooked up and you don't have to deal with the issue anymore. <laughs> that's it. For me, that's a good troubleshoot because 50% of that, you're done. You know, there's a 50% chance that you replace the camera and you're good to go. There's no settings that could possibly have anything to do with that. So it's it's like kind of safe to, to go at it that way. Um, all right. So this guy is going to get mounted like this. Um, Let's check the clearance on the bottom. It's perfect. Perfect amount of clearance on the bottom. Um, this ESC does move a little bit in here. The, these holes in the ESC are like M uh, two and a half or something like that. Um, so it moves around a little bit. I mean, I could totally just put spacers that are threaded and just ram them home. Um, I'm tempted to try to put rubber grommets in it again. I like the idea of having um, these electronics on, on rubber grommets so that uh, they have a little shock absorption when you slam into stuff really hard. Um, it also isolates if, if, they're, if they're passing ground through the holes, it, uh, it isolates the holes, which is kind of nice. So couple of benefits of doing that. Unfortunately, in this case, they made these holes kind of small. Um, smaller than you normally would for these little rubber grommets. But I might be able to get it. And I do have a set of these little black grommets just sitting right here. Okay, yeah, so we're good. So I'm going to I'm going to get this thing into rubber grommets. Uh, I've got a little set here. Just waiting for me. That was not planned, by the way. Uh, this is a Speedix GS25 ESC. Uh, unfortunately, it is uh, discontinued. It, it was discontinued a long time ago, actually. This hasn't been sold for well over a year. Um, and that's sad because this was like a $45 ESC that was 25 amps, really light, and had BL Heli 32. Um, total unicorn. It was pretty durable. Uh, the The problem with this ESC, though, is that the uh, the battery pads are in the middle, and like I'm not even kidding, they are literally in the middle of the ESC, um, which is just silly. I'll show you in one second. There we go. So the the battery pads are here, right in the center. See where those wires are coming out of? Those are the battery pads. Terrible spot for them. Um, I'm sure that they didn't want to have to put them there, but there aren't many of these tiny little cheap ESCs that are BL Heli 32. So I'm sure it was a situation of like, yo, we either don't make this ESC BL Heli 32, or we put the power pads in the middle of the damn thing. And I'm I'm glad that they, uh, I'm glad that they made this ESC. It, it's I, I've. Uh, yeah, I've had really good luck with them. It made me very sad when they got discontinued. That being said, though, they haven't been super durable. Um, I have broken a bunch of them, but, man, I'm hard on 3-inch rigs, so it's kind of not surprising um, that I've managed to break a few of them. I'm kind of coming down to my last few. So there's, like, this one, and uh, there's the one right off screen here, and I think that's it. Um, 
And, like, this has been on a build before, and I'm always suspect of that. Like, I, I try to really leave builds together um, as long as possible. So I have a funny feeling that this ESC might be bad. Um, but at the moment, I don't really have any other ESCs. So I'm going to I'm going to either confirm that this is bad or I'm going to be good to go. <laughs> um I really wish I had uh, made a note. What I'll do is I'll I'll put the 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 electric the electronic components into a little baggie and I'll with Sharpie write on that baggie what's what the deal is. Um, and I did not do that in this case. So hopefully what that means is that there were no problems with it. But I don't know. I have a funny feeling that there were. But we'll find out together, damn it, if I can ever get this effing rubber grommet through here. Sometimes they really fight. Um, there we go. But if you're stubborn enough, you can always win. My friends, always remember that. Just be more stubborn. So there we go. Now we are on rubber grommets. That's going to make it sit up even higher. So now I can actually take out, more than likely, these little uh, plastic spacers that I had on here for the previous ESC that sat down too low because I don't think it was on any kind of rubber grommet. I think it was just the PCB right up against the uh, the bottom nuts. So that is perfect. Just enough clearance, you won't be able to see it, but the, um, the plug header is on the bottom and there's just enough clearance between the bottom plate and the bottom of the plug header. So this is good to go. So now um, all you've got to do is all of the work of, of getting the motors on here. And that's, that's really the hard part. So uh, easiest thing to do. So I, I've got motors on race wires already. Uh, so the quest, so all I've, all I've got to do is go from the, uh, the race wire to the, to the ESC here. Um, and a, and a common question becomes, well, what gauge wire do you use to do this? And it's a simple answer. You just look at the, at the motor wire. And I mean, realistically, like one of the things that I always do is when I get a motor, I chop the wires off for the race wire and then I just keep the rest of the wire. So just use that, use the other part of the wire. In this case though, it is, it's bound to say on one of these motors in a little bit there. I wanna say it's like 22, there's the AWG, but I don't quite have the number. Yeah, Christ, let's see if I put them in the, in the drawer. Yeah. Is this them here? Let's see. Red wire? No. I don't know what that red wire is from. Uh, where would I have put the... Uh, I would have put these in the little axis container, which is over here in the motor's box. Where's the motor's box? There it is. That's good. I need to get in this box anyway. Uh, okay, so I have this little Axis ships his motor ships their motors in these little guys, and so I have this one that I just put all of the uh, all the little chopped bits of wire in. Uh, twenty four gauge, there it is, twenty four gauge, and I think this has a this might have. A mix. Why does that red wire look so thick? So we got 24. I'm just going to confirm this because I don't want to put wire that's too big on 24. Yeah, it looks like 24 is, is definitely the way to go. But look, these red wires look really thick. Why do they look so big? I think they're, I think it's just an optical illusion. Yeah, these are 24 too. Okay, cool. All right, so I probably only need, oops, just drop that. I probably only need three sets of these um, because I can use one set for the rear motors because it's a really short run and then the other uh, two sets for the fronts. So one set here, two sets here, and then another red and another black 
and let's just make sure that they're 24, 24. Yep. All right. So we're good. And then three sets. Cool. So that is good to go. Uh, I am putting Axis 1404 4510 KV motors on here. Is that what they are? Yep, 4510 KV. I cannot believe I remembered that. Um, so I'm going to solder up to these tiny little race wires first. Uh, because this is going to be the hardest part of the soldering job. These are not the normal... Um, race wires that I use these are much 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 smaller and skinnier uh, because the AOS arms are split a arm design and it fits perfectly to the width of that arm uh, the normal race wires that I run are uh, 15 millimeters wide and they look ridiculous on these arms they just it just it's just stupid looking um, so yeah we're using these smaller ones and they should be fine. They're rated up to 4S and I only run this stuff uh, up to 4S. So, so let's take a couple of these wires and we're gonna cut one of these, one of these sets of three in half. And we're gonna go through some soldering tips while we do this. So stretch them out like this, roughly fold them in half and then chop them. All right, so now we've got two sets for two of these motors that are cut down. Um, first and foremost, strip wires with your fingernails. Your fingernails will never, will always chew through the silicone, but they will never go through the wire because the material that your fingernails are made of is a lot less hard than the metal of the wire. If you strip your wires with wire clippers, you can very easily nick one or two or three or four of the inner strands of wire, and then that's gonna reduce your throughput and that's gonna be a bottleneck in the system. So um, grow your fingers out, fingernails out a little bit. Even if you chew your fingernails like a lunatic like me, you can still do it. Um, and yeah, strip them down with that. I also will take a second to just push down on the silicone, because sometimes when you pull uh, with your fingers, you can stretch the silicone out a little bit. So just take your fingernail and push it down a little bit. I then let, I hang these off the side of my desk here. You can't really see it, but I hang the open end off the side of my desk so I can bring the soldering iron up under them. Um, for illustration purposes, I will pretend like this block is the end of the desk and I will tin these wires on the end of the uh, little disgusting block of wood here. Uh, Polly Shortcut says, I also cut uh, some heat shrink today. It didn't fit, so I cut it twice, and it's still too short. Yeah, that's one of the great things about the race wires is that if you cut your motor wires too short or if you hack up your motor wires on a propeller, um, you can uh, basically fix them. Uh, so I've got these ends here from these wires that were pre-tinned, but these are tinned with... Um, lead free solder which sucks so we're gonna retin them and while we're at it we're gonna shorten these up this is a little bit too much exposed wire uh, so we're just gonna come in here and shorten it up a little bit we don't need that much exposed wire on these guys but the most important thing we're gonna do is um, to get some leaded uh, solder onto these wire ends. If you don't tin your wires, the rest of your, your work is going to be a nightmare, so just do it. Um, the amount of time that it takes grossly offsets the amount of time that it saves when inevitably one of your wires gets screwed up. So, you're now going to take your soldering iron. I run mine at 700 Fahrenheit. Uh, that seems to be a nice kind of middle ground. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. You can do big wires if you're patient. You can do small wires if you're quick. Um, you're going to put the tip of the soldering iron under the wire, and you're going to feed solder through the top. Give you guys a nice close view 
of what's happening here. All right, so I'm gonna go right to left so that I'm not crossing the tip of the soldering iron over so you really won't see this first one. Put a little bit of solder on the tip of the iron first and then just push the solder down from the top. Bring the solder ball up, push the wire down into it with the solder. Solder ball up, push the wire down. And what's cool is when you're pushing the wire down, you're adding a little bit of extra solder from the strand. Come on, buddy, stop it. I got a little bit too much solder on the end of the iron, but we'll be okay. There we go. Oh, oh. Just transferred a ton of that solder. I'm gonna get a little bit of it off. That one's good though. What we're trying to do is push solder in between the strands of wire. That's sort of the name of the game here. We want as much solder on these wires as possible within reason. We don't want it to be a big ball of solder. Um, but again, we want to make sure that we saturate this and get as much of the solder in between the strands as possible. And that's all it is. That's all. Um, that's all tinning wires is and it's really important to do that so do not skip that step uh, now you're gonna clear off any little balls or blobs of solder that were created usually I can get these with my fingertip but for some reason this one refuses there we go and alright so now we're gonna do a couple of these motors and I'm gonna run them out the front like this I've already got these pads tinned here on the wire itself so I can just run the wire directly into it and I'm gonna mimic the other side and go black then red then black so I'm gonna use my left hand to hold the wire in place I usually do these straight but this camera is in the way here so I'm gonna do these at an angle I do want to add just a little bit more solder to this first pad that I'm gonna be hitting second there we go just a tiny little bit there, there was just like really not hardly any on there so your left hand does all of the control of the wire your right hand is just bringing in the uh, the heat and this is why it's important to tin everything we've got solder in between the strands of wire we've got solder on the pad so all we need to do is bring heat in. We don't need to have a third hand to try to also bring solder in. And I've got my nerd goggles on with magnification because this is pretty small work. Not tiny whoop small, but still pretty small. This is the same, I believe this is the same gauge as the, uh, the tiny whoop power leads. And that's all there is to it. As soon as you remove the heat, you wanna be super still um, to keep that solder joint completely stationary. If you're, if you're shaking around, um, you have the potential to create a cold solder joint. So you want to be nice and still. Don't blow on it. That's going to introduce movement. Just stay still and be patient. Give it a second to, uh, to cool off and you'll be fine. I like to give them a little bit of downward pressure to try to splay out the wires so that the wires sit flat on the pad. You got to do that within reason though. If you do it too hard, um, she won't walk right for a week. If you do it too hard. <laughs> If you do it too hard, you'll bridge to the next pad, to the to the one pad over. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I had to. Somebody was thinking it. All right, this is getting a little weird here. Uh, let's uh, let's get it off of there. So these are really close together. Um, this is this is going to be a little difficult. So let me just. Uh, 
I thought I'd be able to do it by hand, but let me do it with the uh, with the fine tip tweezers. A lot of the times you really need these fine tip tweezers to do this small work. So here we go. Let's try it again. Yeah, much better this time. So I forgot to add flux. Uh, there is flux in the solder, uh, but yeah, I should have had some flux on these joints uh, that would have made the joints come out a little bit cleaner and a little bit shinier although to be honest they're they're pretty clean and pretty shiny I'm gonna give them a little tug here if they're gonna fail under a being pulled like that I want them to fail right now rather than up in the air um, and yeah that looks pretty good I'm pretty happy with that so let's uh, let's move on to the next here because we've only got two of them that we uh, that we uh, tin the wires for at the moment and so here we go and now this one has a little bit of extra solder on it but that's okay because this pad actually didn't have quite enough solder on it so it's a little bit of a match made in heaven um, right now, what I'm dealing with is I've got a little bit too much solder on this pad and wire. So this is my reminder to flux. I'm going to flux all three pads here. And now I'm going to come back in and I'm going to clean the tip of the soldering iron. Solder always moves towards the heat. So I can come in here and I can remove just a little bit of solder by just reheating this solder joint and a little bit of the solder is going to stick to the tip of the iron and there it is and now i've picked up that extra little bit of solder that i didn't want on there now we're going to do the middle one uh, i'm actually going to hit this one one more time the the wire is kind of sitting up a little bit i want it to sit down there we go that's the stuff all right, big difference having the flux on there. Really, really, really big difference. Here we go with the center wire. I'm gonna do this one by hand. A Little bit of downward pressure to just splay those wires out. Right now the wires are in a circle. So by putting a little bit of downward pressure, you can make them, you'll make them into a little bit more of an oval. Um, but these pads are not very wide so I can't do that much. Like, I, I gotta, um, yeah, just be very careful with the amount of pressure that I put. This third one is really difficult to do by hand um, because your fat fingers kind of like push against the wire next to it and you don't want that. So this third one, I feel like I'm always gonna have to do with tweezers, but that's okay. And of course, as soon as I say that, this can be the problem with the tweezers is like ah, fuck. they have a little bit of thickness too so we had one little strand of wire try to escape so we're gonna fix that okay let's clean the iron and let's try this again I'm gonna come back on the wire a little bit that'll help with the uh, the two wires kind of banging into one another. All right, hold on. Let's get some flux on here. When you start to have a hard time, just pull the ripcord, sit back for a second, add some more flux, breathe, look at the problem. The problem that I'm really having is that the red wire is shifted over a little bit so I'm gonna to try to move the red wire to give me a little bit more space on this last pad here so I'm gonna just pinch the red wire in there we go and that moved it over just a tiny little bit unfortunately that also made the wire sit up on a blob of solder so I need to reheat this one more time that's perfect now the red wire is dead center and it's flat on the pad like I want it. I'm going to try to do this last one by hand again. There we 
we go. That's fine. It's not. It's it's not sitting. I oh, know it's fine. It's fine. I'm being crazy. Uh, so there we go. The red one does have a little bit of an angle on it, but that's fine. It, that'll get cleaned up once it's on the uh, once it's on the rig. Oh man, it's sm This is it's a three and a half inch rig, but man, it's small, 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 small work. Um, Paulie Shortcut says, "Why not solder? No flux given." <laughs> Boondock Striker says, I bought copper solder tips and they won't tin. Any reason not to return them? No, definitely return them. Uh, Boondock Striker says, the solder won't stick to the tips. Interesting. That's weird, man. Um, I have no suggestions there. I, I am of no help there. Uh, so now we've got two motors prepped and ready to go. Let's do uh, one side of the quad. Let's do the easy side of the quad here. And, uh, well, maybe not. Are the front motors... I did these both with the cut in the ass. See, these front motors are not long enough. But, hey. Let's do one of these rears. And, uh, yeah, it'll be great. I'm not going to be able to keep this camera rolling for this. It, it, is, it is going to be in the way. So you're going to have to suffer with top down um so the question is do i run the wires up this arm or up this arm i th think i run them up this arm um kind of depends on how the motor mounts uh, the motor mounts with them right down the middle that's kind of annoying uh, i see why chris did that though um so can't really talk too much shit uh, I have enough wire length to do them this way, I think. Well, matter of fact, I don't. God damn it. Uh, so I guess I'm going this other way. I guess I'll go back down here and then just turn the corner right here. That's going to bolt down like that. And then this guy is just going to have to pull one of these. Yeah. Okay. So what, what I always like to do is kind of get this thing roughly where it's going to be. And then I'll come in here and I'll cut these wires. I'll just like hold these wires up to the pads and cut them down like as per how they're sitting on the pads. So... This can just use one finger to hold this. Um, even better, you put a, a, a piece of VHB here, but we're going to be all right. So we'll take this wire and always push a little bit extra in. Um, you always want to have a little bit too much rather than not quite enough. And then once you cut the first one, like you're kind of fine because then you just sort of line the the other ones up um, as per that first one. So then the red one is next. Again, just give them a little bit extra. I'll cut the red one like up here somewhere. Also keep in mind that the second and third ones are not gonna be able to go at a perfect 90 degree angle. Um, they're gonna have to like come off at a little bit of an angle. Here's what I mean by that. The um, the uh, the first one, you can run it perfectly perpendicular to the pad, um, but the second and third ones they're gonna have to come off at a forty five degree so that they're not um, so that they're not uh, folding over the other ones. I'll show you what I mean right now. So now we got to tin these wires again. Now that we have them cut down to the correct lengths, we got to uh, strip and tin the other section of wire. The pads on my ESC are already tinned um, because I've used this ESC before. I do not need to retin them. I did the work, so I used leaded solder. Um, if this ESC had come from the factory with the pads tinned, I would add leaded tin to them because the factories all use 
non-leaded tin so that their workers don't die. How dare they, right? Um, the top camera is fixed focus on this surface. So when my hand gets closer, it doesn't autofocus, and that's why it goes out of slightly out of focus. Also, I just realized that the Logitech software is not running, and that makes the uh, the top camera not work all that well. So we just need to uh, tin these up real quick. The, the quality should increase in a second if it hasn't already. Uh, same kind of deal. We're just going to tin these up real quick. Heat from the bottom, feed the solder from the top. Away we go. You can tin stuff really quick. I tend to do it a little bit more slowly here on the stream so that you guys can see what the hell I'm doing. But at this point, I'm trying to get this done before 12, so I'm just going to sort of blast through this. All right. <coughs> One motor tinned up and good to go. Now, here's what I'm talking about when I say, like, coming at an angle. The very first wire I can bring in at a really sharp 90 degree angle. Make sure that your motor is facing upwards. Make sure that your motor isn't like sitting on its side. You don't, you, the, the, the solder joints will not twist. So yeah, keep your motor sitting flat here and the wires will lay more flat on the frame. You could technically like pre-tension the wires in one direction to really encourage them to sit flat. Um, but I always forget which direction it is that you want to pre-tension them. So I just instead get them flat. Let's add some flux here for the solder joints. This thing keeps getting clogged and it is pissing me off. Although, just as I said that, it came unclogged. As usual, all you need to do is bitch and then things will start working. All right, there we go. Uh, this is just flux paste in a syringe. I don't recommend you buy this one from TBS. It's it's very cloggy. All right, thin tipped twire, pliers, tw tweezers. Hold it flat at a 90 degree angle to the pad to keep it out of the way of the props and everything. Bring your heat down. And it's as simple as that. And I just want to flatten this out a little bit more. I didn't quite push on it hard enough. Whoops, shit. There we go. That's what I want. <coughs> Give it a second to cool. Make sure that the silicone is hanging off the pad. And now these next two are going to be at an angle onto this pad because we don't want to cross them up and above. You want the wires to sit as flat to the pad as possible. Uh, that's how you get the strongest connection. So we're going to bring it in at a 45 here, pull it down, and yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, third one, 45 degree angle. I cut this one a little bit too short, I can already tell, but it's going to be all right. I kind of cut the middle one a little bit too short as well. but I think they'll be just barely long enough. All of that smoke that you see is the flux burning off. <clears throat> that is a good thing. Um, when it stops smoking, that's what, ah, fuck. that means there's no flux left and you wanna be careful with that. Um, so the smoke is a good thing. So, See how there's no smoke right now? No, yeah, there it is now. I was going to say, it's because I burned all the flux off because I was being slow, but I guess I wasn't being that slow. Uh, so now you're going to take your little 5X loop and you're going to take a look at your work. Make sure that it's somewhat shiny. Make sure that there's enough solder on there. In my case, I don't love the middle connector. Um, so I'm just going to add a little bit of solder to the tip of the soldering iron and I'm just gonna add that to the joint. Here's a little trick. Once you have all three, you can bring the tweezers in from the side here and grip them really hard. That'll all, that'll hold them all in place. And in theory, I can rework this middle one without any of them moving. Sometimes this doesn't work though, so let's see. All 
and I want to push this middle wire down. That's the kind of the issue that I have it with it right now. Much better. Much, much, much better. That would have probably been completely fine, um, but how much extra time did that take, right? Like, you know, take care of your tip, Denzel says. <laughs> And we're just checking it one more time. Yeah, we're fine. That's good to go. Cool. So they are. And now let's see. Is it long enough? It certainly is. That's going to sit right there. This is actually going to look kind of cool having these uh, LEDs back here. And then the front LEDs are going to be here. This will be this will be neat looking up in the air. Um, so, yeah, we see we have plenty of room. This is the 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 motor moving because it's not bolted down but it's gonna be somewhere in the middle of this movement. Um, and you can see the wires will sit nice and flat, nice and out of the way of the airflow and also out of the way of prop strikes. Um, so that is how you get your motor wires like pretty much perfect on the arms. Um, I'm gonna do that three more times and then this ESC will be good to go. Uh, but I'm gonna do that on my time because it's 11.59. And that's the end of the old live stream Arino. Uh, my gr speaking of Arinos, my uh, grind Arino is on the way. Is that what it's called? That's what it's called, grind Arino. We need another fund. What do you guys want to see me test next? Uh, Denzel the Terrible says, "Do you have any pro hints on how to take best care of the tip? Just don't stick it where it doesn't belong, friends." That's all you gotta know. Uh, if you were talking about soldering iron tips, uh, the key is to leave solder on it. Do not do your work and then clean the tip and put it back on the stand. Take the soldering iron off the stand, clean it, do your work, put it back on the stand. The more solder that's on the tip of the damn thing, um, Basically, having solder on the tip prevents it from oxidizing and corroding. Um, so, yeah. CMYK says, uh, new fun CID frame. There's no money that's going to make my frame appear any sooner. <laughs> Unfortunately. Thanks for hanging out, friends. I'm going to go run around in the woods with a gun in day Z on PS5. Um, I'll see you on Wednesday for Whoop Wednesday. And uh, what are we going to do? I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah, I don't know what we're going to do this Wednesday. Usually I have, like, something that desperately needs help. But at the moment I don't. Maybe we'll test... Um, I do have a set of the, the Weebleed Screamers, the 702-32500s, um, that I want to put on a rig and compare to the Tiny Whoop 0702-32000s. It's kind of a stupid comparison because they're both made by, by Happy Model. And I'm not going to be able to tell the difference between 500 kV. Um, so I don't really know whether to do that or not. What, what I really want is to get that damn cable for Walksnail because the Walksnail rig is on the 32,500. So I want to see really how that is. But I think uh, Maggie might have done an Amazon order today with that cable on it. So that would be amazing. Um... Thanks for hanging out, friends. My name is Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. Head on over to C-I-O-T-T-I-F-P-V.com and support me, and I'll keep doing these things until the dawn of time. And uh, we can thumb our noses at the FAA for road ID bullshit. Love you. Be good. Here's, uh, uh, here's, what is this file? 191K. That's a, that's a file that's got nothing on it. Uh, here's a little bit of RC drift footage. Drift Slow Mo 1. What the hell is this? Why is it 6.9 gigs? I'll play this for you. Let's get some, uh, it's vertical video, so you might vomit, but you'll be okay. Golden Triangle. Let me get you a little, little music here. Oh, this is the one. Oh, yeah, 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 this is the one. Hold on. No, 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 stop it. Stop it. Go back. Stop it. Okay. Drift Slow Mo 1 coming at you. Love you guys. Be good. 
uh, full screen here, this. Later, friends. See you Wednesday.